Welcome all of you Ristekes and Chutzikes to podcast Life the Battlefield. As a part of our series, Dirty Dozen Female Spies. Today we're going to talk about original Bond girl. Her name is Maria Cristina Janina Skarbek. She's also known as a Cristina Granville. She was the beauty who expertly decided and deceived the Nazis. Other refers to her as a Polish Matahari and, of course, as I mentioned before, original Bond lady. Kristina Skarbek, she's a Polish-born actress. She's created with inspiring Ian Fleming to create the Vesper Lynn character in the James Bond novels. Needless to say, I want you to remember, I want you to learn, and I want you to absorb this. Ian Fleming was during the Second World War working in intelligence agency as a part of the British military and Navy Air Force. We don't know full extent what he was doing a part of his official uh, biography. But Ian Fleming utilized all his work in the intelligence sector to create his novels. Christina Skarbek, she's original James Bond girl. And her character was called Vesper Lind. So you can Google it, Vesper Lind. Skarbek was raised in a wealthy household as a daughter of Jewish banker by surname Gold Feder. That was her maiden name. She displayed remarkable beauty from an early age and, of course, she competed in the Miss Poland pageant in 1930s. And guess she finished in the sixth place. In 1938, she and her second husband fled Poland and in London she made every effort to aid her occupied country. As you know, the Second World War in continental Europe started 1st of September 1939 by Germany invading the Poland. Her beauty and self-assurance aided her on her first assignment in Hungary in 1939, and the operation strategy appeared to be taken straight out of a spy novel, even before she became the Bond girl. She portrayed a journalist from Budapest who relocated to Slovakia and crossed the Polish border on skis before arriving in Zakopane and enlisting the assistance of friends. She could begin disseminating propaganda because that's how they started, you know, a part of the underground resistance, disseminating propaganda. As soon as she established her courier service and she would then transmit any and all information she could get to where? To London. Christina frequently went by the name Christine Granville. And uh, her cleverness, how she operated in the Wall Espionage, became famous. Christine once cut her tongue during a German interrogation and persuaded the soldier that she had tuberculosis because she was perfectly coughing up blood. Don't forget, in the 1930s and 1940s, Tuberculosis was a very serious illness. There was no cure and people were dying. Needless to say as well that when you've been captured by the Gestapo, they will never let you out. They will never take the hands of you because they're a sadistic and brutal type of secret police. However, when you say tuberculosis, you see how the things are changing? Interrogator becomes afraid. So she was very clever. She cut her tongue and she coughed the blood and she said, I have tuberculosis. And um, what they did, they released her as a result. And this is just of many tales of her adventures. One day, two German soldiers halted her near the Italian border and ordered her to put her hands up. And what would you expect in her hands? (laughs) That is very interesting. When she did, she threatened to German soldiers that if she pull her hands out, they will find out what? Two grenades under each hand leading to their retreat. So soldier says like, well, okay, lady, thank you very much for your hand grenades, you know. We don't know it's a real or dummy or school type of grenade. We're going to retreat. But one of her most well-known missions was the freeing Francis Camarets. He was resistance movement commander who had been taken prisoner by Gestapo. And as I say, the Stadt police, the secret police of Germany, uh, they interrogate you till you don't die. 
Anyway, she tracked him down by singing the tune Frankie and Johnny, which they both knew, and she made her way around the prison. When Francis began, began to reply, she was able to find him. Now, this is the very interesting. The guy is in a prison, and what she did, she managed to convince the officer that the Francis that she's a Francis wife and attempted to contact him. And then there was no social media, there was no IDs, there was no nothing. Can you imagine what length of convincing the German officer she went to convince them that she's the Francis wife? Now, the Germans not only allowed her to visit him, but she also managed to free him from jail and save his life. Now, Christina was the longest serving British Secret Service agent, but simply because she was a woman, she was not given any of the numerous military honors for which she was nominated. Don't forget, you become nominated and then you get things. So that's how they stipulating you to work. Are well, we gonna recommend you? We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Now, her situation changed after all and got progressively worse. She wasn't a spy anymore. She didn't work for the intelligence sector. So what she was doing, you expecting some nice desk job, an office job? No. She had to start working as a cleaner on a cruise ship because the reward for her job was only 100 pounds. She passed away in 1952 after being killed in the budget hotel she was staying at in London. She was murdered by Dennis Muldowney, an Irish co-worker who had a crush on her. Now, that's the truth, we don't know. And I always remind you guys that you understand one thing when you talk about world of intelligence and espionage. This is not a service. You talk freely. Um, I try to elaborate as much as possible information as I can in this series. But there's a lot of murky waters. As well, Christina Death is treated as suspicious because she's been killed by her co-worker who had a crush on her. Let me just say something to you. This is the Bible of Intelligence Operatives. And it's published in 1982 in Ex-Yugoslavia. And of course, I got a part of my curriculum, my education when I went in school. And uh, her name, Christina Skarbek, it's in this book. Imagine and fancy that. Thank you for watching Live the Battlefield. And thank you for watching Dirty Dozen Top Female Spies. Feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment. Thank you.